and tonight's mission marks SpaceX's 99th launch from Slick 40, and it will send Hotbird 13F into space for our customer Utelsat. It's one of two new large satellites from Airbus that will replace three existing satellites at its Hotbird flagship neighborhood at 13 degrees east. The Hotbird family at 13 degrees east uh, forms one of the largest broadcasting systems in Europe, delivering 1,000 television channels to more than 160 million homes in Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. And with that, let's learn a little bit more about Utelsat and their partnership with the European Space Agency. The European Space Agency is very proud through its partnership project, to, like the one with the satellite manufacturer Airbus, to support the space industry in Europe to foster innovation and succeed in the highly competitive global telecommunication market. Eight satellites have already been sold by Airbus, with the option for a ninth. Thanks to the European Space Agency Eurostar NEO partnership project, the satellite will be used in high-speed internet connection and advanced mobility communication, as well as television broadcasting. Investing in space today creates job and prosperity in Europe and improve life on Earth. there was our final go for a launch from SpaceX launch director. So at this point in time, as we approach T minus 35 seconds, all systems are go for a launch of Falcon 9 with Utelsat's Hotbird 13F payload. Seconds. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying the Utilsat Hotbird 13F satellite. During ascent, the M1D engines will actually swivel and help steer Falcon 9. This is known as gimbal. The rocket autonomously tilts the engines just a few degrees, and this gimbling 
allows the vehicle to perform a gravity turn, which is when we go vertical as well as horizontal. So we're still going up, but now we're also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. And there we heard the call out for maximum aerodynamic pressure. So now we'll throttle those nine M1D engines back up. In about a minute, we'll have three events occurring in quick succession. The first will be main engine cutoff or MECO, as it's seen there on the timeline at the bottom of your screen. Miko will be followed immediately by stage separation, which as the name indicates, the first stage and second stage will separate. And then the second engine, that Merlin vacuum engine will ignite for SES one or second engine start one. Everything continues to look nominal for the first stage. A great view of the M1D exhaust plane. Standing by for main engine cutoff. Eco. Stage separation confirmed. And there you can see that that MVAC has ignited, that nozzle turning orange and white. Those three events happening rapidly. The first stage there on the left-hand side of your screen and the right-hand side for the second stage. Those vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Next major event is fairing separation occurring in about 10 seconds. You can see the Space Coast in the distance the background of the left-hand side of the screen. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's our first look at the UTELSAT Hotbird 13F payload. Now those fairing halves that we just separated, uh, we will be attempting to retrieve them again uh, once they fall back to planet Earth. We'll be using our recovery ship, Doug, to do so. Stage one FTSS safe. Stage one entry point startup. So there on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see those three M1D engines have relit the center engine and two radial engines. We expect this to last for another 10 seconds. Stage one entry burn shut down. All right, we heard the call out that stage one entry burn has concluded. As I mentioned, that is the first of two burns that the first stage will perform. Everything continues to look nominal for the second stage there on your screen. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Standing by for second engine cutoff one. All right, we started to see that that MVAC nozzle was losing that bright white glow, indicating that we had a second, second, engine, second engine cutoff. And there on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see that the first stage has begun the landing burn. Nominal parking orbit. Heard good orbital insertion there for the second stage. Stage one landing like deploy. And there you have it. That landing marks SpaceX's 147th recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Now, the mission isn't over just yet. The second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. After the coast phase, we'll light that MVAC engine for a second time. 
And back start up. All right, there we can see that has begun where this burn is planned to last about one minute uh, and it will carry the second stage and the Hotbird 13F payload into the orbit needed to deploy the satellite. We can see that orange glow beginning to develop again on the MVAC nozzle. About halfway through this second stage burn. Another 15 seconds remaining in this second engine burn. And back, shut down. And there we heard call out that we had good shutdown of that second uh, engine start or excuse me, for that second engine cutoff. First. Nominal deploy orbit. All right, there we just heard confirmation uh, that we were able to place it in a good orbit. Here's some more information about Hotbird 13F from the satellite manufacturer Airbus. <laughs> Hotbird 13F is the first satellite based on the new Airbus Eurostar NEO platform. I would like to celebrate through this Hotbird 13F launch our long relationship with the Hotelsat that is going to fly our first Eurostar NEO as they have already flown our first Eurostar 3000, our first Eurostar 3000 full electrical. The collaboration with Airbus is a very long-term partnership. Airbus has built for us the satellite Hotbird 13F, uh, which is going to replace an aging satellite at uh, 13 degrees east, which is a key position for the Utelsat group. Hotbird 13F enhances Utelsat's ability to serve its 135 million customers across Europe, Northern Africa, and the Middle East. I would like also to thank the IDA and all the national agencies for their support for the development. It's already another seven satellites which are under construction. Thanks to that, it's all the suppliers and partners of Europe that are involved in those programs. Hotbird 13F and 13G both have payloads of more than two tons, but a launch mass of only 4,500 kilograms. With a spacecraft power of 22 kilowatts, they are paving the way to a new era of spacecraft. We're absolutely thrilled uh, to uh, see this uh, innovative platform, which is the Eurostar NEO, uh, which will fly for the first time, uh, being operated soon by the Utelsat fleet. Welcome to the age of Eurostar NEO. As a reminder, UTELSAT is a world-leading satellite operator in a footprint covering Europe, Africa, the Middle East, Asia, and the Americas. Payload separation confirmed. And there you see it on your screen. Payload separation confirmed for the Hotbird 13F payload.